Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Big Porky here. You know, don't you? You know, because that's why you've tuned in. Today, I've got a special treat for you. I'm joined by my good friend, Mickey Theo from Essex, to uh, have a bit of a chat about the current state of play in boxing and what's going on in Mickey's life. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, all good, thank you. All right, mate. Well, that's brilliant. What have you been up to? Just getting over the snow, eh? <laughs> I'm snowed in myself, mate, at the moment. Are you really? Yeah, it ain't too bad down here. Yeah, it isn't me too bad. We're getting around still, so it's all right. I should have been at my dear friend's Frank's funeral yesterday. I got up in the morning and just that makes no good in snow. And it's just no good, mate. And other cars, somebody were using the other one. I've got that Jeep. So it's a bit of a disaster, really, yesterday. Uh, so I've, I'm a bit gutted that I didn't go, but I hope Frank's all right. Uh, but what can you do if it's not COVID? It's weather, isn't it? Well, it's four by four, isn't it? At the end of the day. What? Four by four. If you've got four by four, you can well, do it. Oh, well, yeah, but somebody were using it on, on oh, one, so there's not a lot I could do. But Sorry, sorry, dear, you couldn't make it, bus. Yeah, yeah, it's... Uh, I'm uh, a bit gutted, actually. I didn't go, but uh, I hope Frank's going to be all right. I'll be going to see him next week at some point, all being well, or when we get this... When everything's back to normal, it's all a bit upside down, isn't it? Mm. Uh I'm going to ask you a few questions, Mick. I've just jotted 10 down. Uh, two seconds, let me just have a word. Two seconds, two seconds. <coughs> sorry, sorry about that. Bit That's of, all right. Uh, We're used to it, Russ. We're, yeah. we're, <laughs> we're used to it. You were shooting off, ain't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Daniel Kinahan statement, Mick, uh, a lot of people seem to be commenting on it now. Nobody was saying anything for the first week. Obviously, I've opened the floodgates and I've come out and spoke about it. We're not doing anything wrong. A lot of people uh, don't want to come out and speak because they, they don't want to ruin it for themselves down the line. And yeah. let me tell you this, I've already heard back off something that the people involved at MTK, they're looking at certain people now and they're, they're thinking, you know what? He's got me back. He ain't got me back. But I'm one of them neutrals, me. And people have given me stick about it. Well, look, I don't live in Ireland, and I don't want to live in Ireland. But I'm going to say this. I don't know the man. But what I will say is, <coughs> pay the boxers on time. Man. And this is the last thing I want to go over it, all being well. Pay the boxers on time. He's never been convicted of so much as a parking ticket. So I think he can be a great, I feel a little bit aggrieved. Do you? I'm not into all that extradition and this and that, blah de blah If he's what he is, go arrest him. Go through proper channels and arrest him. Until the man's arrested and charged and, and then given a fair trial, mm -hmm. how can they do do what they did to him? I mean, Panorama, it's not the first time they've done that to people, is it, as well? What, what do you think? Yeah, people? listen, at the end of the day, Russ, it's all assumptions, yeah? We can all assume an assumption that people have done this in the paper. It's, 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 at the end of the day, it's all evidence and proof, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. listen... The police had him under operation investigation, Operation Shovel. You know, I went back with Panorama and studied it a bit more. Went back a bit and looked at a few bits and pieces. So, Operation Shovel for 10 years, what did they get? Sweet FA, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Then, the I think the Spanish government had to release £500 million of their money back to them, yeah? Yeah. And they're the biggest cartel in, in, in Europe. I mean, you know, if they're releasing that back and... Operation Shovel didn't work. So that proves what the guys were all about. He's a legitimate businessman, yeah, at the end of the day, yeah? So, you know, all these people, he say, that say, it's all bollocks, you know? Yeah. But you've got to go back to the Regency Hotel when they try to get rid of Daniel, yeah? Mm. What happened in the Regency Hotel? I mean, I've been looking into the internet and looking at it and studying it, yeah? Why didn't the... Listen, once the boys went in there, the boys with the guns went in there to do, really, the, the, the victim was Daniel, yeah? When they were in there, Guns were going off. Surely there must have been a hundred phone calls to the police, the guardy. Yeah. Where answer the qu this question? Where were the guardy? And why didn't they turn up? They might have been in on, in on it. Hundred percent. I reckon the guardy and the, and the Irish government set him up, yeah, to have him put away, so they have got no more headaches in the red. Yeah. That's what they've done. Okay. Well, now well, because there's people well. dying everywhere or whatever, they you know they're assuming. He's got something to do with it, you know. The these people and the government tried to take him out, you know. So 
yeah. take a legitimate guy that hasn't got a criminal record. Work that one out. Well, what about uh, this police surveillance they'd had on him for ages and all that? Well, if there were police surveillance on him and people were just popping guns off at this Regency Hotel, why don't they just burst in and deal with it all? Because if, if they were watching him and he's this bad cat, they'd have all had yeah. weapons as well, wouldn't they? Where were they? Where were surveillance people? There were stories about, look, they knew of the boxing event. They knew Daniel was behind it, yeah? They knew all this, the Guardi or the government, joint ventures, yeah? They knew what was going on. They knew he'd be there. They wanted him taken out because why haven't they turned up when probably 100 phone calls went in and it took them over 20 minutes? And you see, if you see some of the videos, it's true. They knew what they were doing. They knew they had the time on their hands, yeah? They took their time scouting around that hotel looking for Daniel. Mm. Unfortunately, got away, yeah? Yeah. So who's to blame here? The government and the police. Yeah. Yeah? Trying to, you know, put away, put down an innocent party. Yeah? With zero convictions. That answers your question, doesn't it? Yeah. That's a big question mark. That yeah. is a big question mark. Why didn't the guy turn up? Yeah, but what I don't want it to come across is that we're cheerleading and here for somebody because we don't... We're not cheerleading. We I see, we, we're reading it. Uh, Russ, we speak from the heart. We can only go on what yeah? evidence we've been We speak told. from the heart. And we, that's what we do. Yeah, that's all I do anyway, and you do as well. Mate, and there ain't many of us, yeah? If you read it and look at the, the, the movies and, and all the uh, YouTube um, parts and bits and pieces and put them together, it, listen, something happens in London, anywhere in, in the UK, a phone call, the police are there. Yeah. Not 20, 25 minutes later, the police still ain't turned up. What does that tell you? It tells you someone's involved with it. Yeah. Joint connections going on. Yeah. Yeah. We can only go on what we, what the evidence we've got. We've got a man here that's never been in trouble in his life being accused of anything and he's not being arrested. And because I, I've done a bit of shoveling, I know what it's like to be in there when you're innocent. It, yeah, Russ, but we can, we nice. can say that. We've been saying that on every chat show we've done. Yeah. yeah. We know that everyone knows he's innocent. Any everyone knows that he hasn't committed anything. There's no there's no evidence for him being charged for anything. Yeah. But the main thing here is why weren't the police attending the Regency on the night of the fight when all the guns were blazing and they're going at these people ruthless murders going out to kill him. Mick, it was way in the day when it happened. Exactly. In the day, what all of a sudden there's no connection to the police, the guardian. That's the big question you got to ask yeah. yourself. Yeah, there's, there is that. No, serious, a big question. If that, if he even got taken to court, you know, why weren't the police, you know, this is a setup. I, it looks like the police to me. And what, that's my that? view. That's my views. Everyone's different. Everyone's got their opinion. Okay. And that's a big opinion there. All right, then. Well, here's another opinion. What, what's going to happen to Barry McGuigan now, then? Is he going to be shunned from working with. Listen, Barry time? McGuigan, Barry McGuigan, you know, at the end of the day, if he treated his fighters correctly, they wouldn't leave him. No. Why would, all of a sudden, you know, MTK's taken them? You can't say they've taken them. They may have spoke, yeah, but that, it's down to the individual boxer to say, do I stay with Barry McGuigan or do I go with MTK? Where's my future? It's all about my future. Yeah. Yeah? Simple. You're working as, as, a, as, as a podcast, Russ, yeah. and you're making a grand a week. I come up to you and say, Russ, I'll give you two and a half grand a week. You're going to stay at a grand a week? No, you're going to come to the other people, aren't you? A grand a week doing this, I want that be... Uh, that'd One be minute, it. if I'm just saying, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Listen, if you're going to get a grand a week and I'm offering you two two grand a week or three yeah. grand a week, you're going to jump over to me. Well, I don't know it's about that. Your mail's away, aren't you? It's your choice. No one's, like, dragging you under the table and fucking holding a gun to your head, are they? No. You know, so what Barry McGuigan said, you know, how he spoke about Daniel was wrong. Yeah, you know? um, he's done that because he's hurt. Apparently, five boxers. Yeah, so that's why that that's why he's talking and putting Daniel down, which is wrong. Why don't you put your boxers down and say you're out of order for going with him? It's not Daniel. It's not MTK. If they've spoken to him and they're putting up proposing a better deal, they're gonna go. You know what boxing is all about. It's yeah. who gets the better deal. Who, who whose mouth gets fed? Yeah. Oh, That's more than you're Barry McGuigan. And McGuigan, you know, he shouldn't be blaming Daniel because Daniel's a businessman. And do you know what he's done right? He's out in the paper today, I read, yeah, on, on news, online, whatever. He's not stepping down from boxing. And do you know what? 
hundred hundred percent he he he's doing the right thing because when the talk about him, him like uh, Tyson Fury said, "Yo, Danny boy, you done it for me, yeah," and then the whole industry went crazy about you know cartels are behind him and this and that and blah blah blah. Then he chose to step down, yeah, which was wrong. Why did he want to? Why does he want to step down? If he's correct, no criminal, no no uh, criminal record, a businessman, yeah. He's worked his bollocks off for 15 years, yeah, to get to where he is today, yeah, for someone to accuse him of, of, of something he hasn't done. Yeah. He's done the right thing. And Daniel, if you listen to this, well done, mate. Keep it up. You're doing the right thing. You are innocent, yeah, and don't let these people put you down. That's coming from me. And I don't even know you, mate. Yeah. But what I can see and what's all over the internet, well done, mate. Keep it going. Forget what these people are saying. They've got nothing else better to do but talk about people. All right, then, moving on. Uh, Joshua against Fury. Fury. Fury against Joshua, whoever's going to be on left-hand side at Billboard. In Saudi Arabia this year, we all human rights issues that it's got, and they're talking 40 quid to charge us back in UK for it. Would that be in bad taste if it happened? Of course it would be bad taste. 40 quid? Who's, I mean... Don't ask me, ask everyone else, you know. I just think it's a liberty. But I don't think it'll be 40 pounds, honestly. It might be talking about 40 quid. I think maximum it's going to be 25 quid. They might want to push it to 30 because it's the top it's the, it's, it's the top of the pops. You like that word, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> top of the pops. Um, no, yeah, like but that. it's like listen, it's like Joshua's last fight in Saudi, yeah. 24.95. Yeah. It's normally 19.99, isn't it? Now it's gone up to 24.95, whatever it was. Um you're paying because it's it's in a it's meant to be the bigger venue, the, not sorry, the bigger venue, the bigger fight of the year that everyone wants to see. And they, they think we can get the money, but um, who knows? Listen, at the end of the day, they can ask what they want. At the end of the day, can't they? It's down to the individual to pay for it. Yeah. Um, or wait twenty four hours and watch it on YouTube, isn't it? For nothing. Yeah, it's. Uh... Listen, I, I, they're going to charge more than 25, 30 quid, mate. All right, what do you I, think of it? I think what it will be 40 quid. And I think they have to be... A, yeah, but what's your point of view about them charging that money? You think it's a rip-off? Well, yeah, obviously, when Eddie Earn came into boxing, they brought pay-per-view back at £15, and now they're talking £40, but winning and wage is still the same, isn't it? So nothing, everything, oh, yeah. he's putting it up, and we're in the middle of a pandemic, and nobody's wages are going up. So it, there's going to come a time where, do you know the man in the street who wants to watch boxing at the fights he can't do and now he's going to be priced out of a pay-per-view and I just think it's wrong it's a bit like the Man United fans that are all good at home games they're all prawn sandwich eating Cockney Reds aren't they they're not Man well, it's, if, if it's 40 quid you know sterling what is it going to be American it's ridiculous isn't it well we're not America we're on about what's happening in England I just think yeah but that, that if that get, that's, that gets sold to America that's going to be 60 quid isn't it 60 dollars or something well it, that, 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 that don't that's cost a lot of money for, 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 to review one fight I'm bothered about what, what they charge in England I think it's a rip off yeah it could be the last fight for either of them and probably could be Joshua's last fight because I think he gets tonks uh, but mm -hmm. I think 40 quid and they're just burying their heads in the sands and they're going to hope it goes away. And that nobody on all the YouTube channels that hang out the back of them, seconds out, fight out, IFL, boxing, social, behind the gloves, none of them lot, sporting icons, and that man strikes back them two. You know them two that hide behind camera, that not in front of mm. camera like me. Yeah. None of them have mentioned anything about this 40 quid because they don't. They don't do it. I think Tyson done a little interview um, on, I think it was Instagram, Saying that, listen, he don't believe the fight's going to happen because Joshua, they don't want Joshua to fight him. Um, well, I've been saying that for a long time, Anna, but let's let's let let's let them chat chat nonsense and show the sense up because how many more times is Eddie Earn going to have to come out with it and say it's ninety percent done? I mean, what did he say yesterday? It's ninety one percent done. There's just a few little uh, I's to dot and T's to cross. I mean, what is it going to be next week? 92%. It's just jagging on and on and on and on. I'm sick of hearing about it. Yeah. Man in the street's sick of it now because people are coming up to me and say, Porky, what's happening with this fight? You're right. The messing is about. It's not fair. It's 40 quid. <laughs> it's just keeping themselves in the mix. In, look, they all play the media game. When Joshua came out with that Black Lives Matter speech, where Fury came out after and did a Traveller's Lives Matter one, 
he was taking a million people to London. He had Michelle Phelps go up, go up to Morecambe and film him. He had Coogan sending him stuff to put on IFL, wasn't he? Which I heard yeah. Coogan fucking got a bit of shit for off Eddie Hearn. But point I want to make is these people, they jump on anything that's trending. They've got no scruples. Yeah. Go to bed with an anaconda snake if it meant getting money, most of them. That's just how, how, how it goes, I'm afraid. They play the PR game, but you can overplay it, can't you, to such an extent that people say, what's going on here? What's going on? Where are these million travellers in London on the Travellers' Lives Matter march? Didn't Good happen, idea. wouldn't happen. I told you it wouldn't happen when he said it. These people say things and after they go, why did I say that? Why did I just say I give seven million to charity? Oh, my God, what have I said? Once you've said it, you can't take it back. Well, who said that? Tyson said it, didn't he? He gave seven million to charity. Right. It didn't, did he? It didn't happen. And then when he were pulled up about it, he shut it down. Look, you can go on forever about what they say. His dad's offered eight or nine people out and then they were former world champions. Not thrown a punch since he come out jail in six years. Not one punch. Speaking of him, what's happening with you and John Fury? Have, we, have you heard anything, mate? I think they're still looking for him. It, it, what's happening? What's happening with this John Fury, Mickey Fio uh, tear up on the cobbles? Tear up. They're still they're still hunting for him, aren't they? They're, they're trying to find him. Well, where, where is John Fury? He's gone quiet. He, he had plenty to say every single day. Oh yeah, he, he had plenty to say about some uh, some alkaline water the other day, didn't he? Well. Is that what look and, and on the bottom he said, watch out, Mickey Fury. This is what John Fury takes, or something like that, don't you? Oh, is that what somebody's put? Oh, you have to no, ignore no, that. I think he was put on the bottom of his video, so um Well, we've still got that reward making in draw at my office for five grand for any yeah. information leading to the man who John Fury knocked out in a one hundred thousand pound bare knuckler twenty eight. I know the guy. I know the guy. He's called the ghost. The ghost. The ghost. You know, all right, the ghost rider. The ghost, the ghost. Okay, right. Well, nobody's nobody's heard from this. All, the you, ghost. all you That's John Fury, all you John Fury bumlicks who keep trolling me every single day. Oh my god, day in, day out. Cameron, just keep removing the comments and blocking them. That's all you've got to do, mate. Cameron, just keep at it. You mean our stickers? All you bumlicks <laughs> who keep setting... Bumlicks? I don't know if it's What we do, mate, we have a bit of fun. We have a sound your block today. He'll go five, I say. Have this set other accounts up? And he goes, yeah, within an hour. So these people are fanatics. Mick, they are fanatics. I tip my hat to yous, but none of you want to come on Porky's Corner and open your mouth, do you? What about that, um, that, uh, that uh, what's his name, that Gary, Gary Nichol? Hiding behind that mask, eh? Oh, him and that gold mask, yeah. You know uh, him, mate. Hey, listen. Very rude, very gold rude, him. You with gold rude, mask. Him. Listen, hang on a minute. Yeah. Mate, you with gold mask, right? Get to Sheffield and, re and get in touch on my email, and I'll tell you what gym to go to in Sheffield if you want a shot of the title, kid. Mr. Gold Mask. I mean, these people, right, they're either hiding behind masks or keyboards. Let me see your face. Show me your face. Exactly. Come on, get on here with it. Let's see your face. It's no good hiding behind yeah. it. Yeah, why 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 have you why do they hide behind masks? You know, I don't understand cowards, it. Cowards, mate. Because the cowards. Cowards, exactly. Cowards is the word. Off with their heads, cowards. Cowards, yeah. Uh, you got this bag, hang on. Right, so these are the dogs that are barking, isn't it? Yeah. What's the latest with you and John Fury? We haven't heard. No, he's gone missing. Uh has John Fury been found out as a talker and not a walker? We agree he has, haven't we? Because he's gone silent. Mm. Do you think it might be best off, Mick, that we just go up to Manchester and make some noise and just get him to come and meet us and get out? Well, you know what we're doing, didn't you? So we'll keep it to that. All right, then. OK. All right. We don't have to talk about him. Who is he, anyway? Yeah, OK. All right. Uh, let's have a look, then. Number... Moving on. To some boxing news. Mark Tibbs is going to be training Daniel Dubois and Martin Bowers is still going to manage him. What do you think about that? And is it a good move? For I think it's a good Daniel? move. I think, yeah, I think, um, you know, he's, he's still going to be his manager, I heard, which yeah. is very good. Uh, he's still behind him, which, you know, swinging him over to Mark, you know what? It would do him a good little change. You know, sometimes that little change 
it helps, you know. But, it, you know, I believe that Martin's still behind him. You know, you know, he's his, mate, he's his boy at the, at the end of the day. So getting Mark to, to, to jump in and, um, you know, I reckon they're going to both train him, but Mark will be, yeah, ahead of it, um, more involved. I think Martin's got loads of fighters anyway. So, um, yeah, good idea. Good idea. Yeah, they know each other, each other for obviously. years. So, you know what I mean? They, I think they grew up together. So, yeah, they grew up together, didn't good, move. Mark, yeah. <laughs> good move. Good <laughs> move. All right, then. Uh, good. We wish Mark Tibbs all the best. I like Mark Tibbs, a good pal of mine. Uh, Leon Spinks has died, which is a shame. Age 67, mate. That's like 10 years on top of you, isn't it? How old was he? 67. 67, yeah. Uh, he beat Muhammad Ali, and after that, it was all downhill, wasn't it? Yeah, what did he die of? Just, just... I don't know what he died of, but uh, he, died, he died penniless and... Uh, in a bit of a bad state, yeah. actually. And there was no money back in the day, was it? There were no money. Well, he got millions to fight Ali in the rematch, and he's had, he earned millions in his career, but ended up on Skid Row. Well, look at Tyson. How many millions did he go through? Yeah. What did you think about uh, Leo, Leon Spinks's career as, as a professional, mate? Yeah, I remember the name. I remember watching him back in the day. You know, I used to start with the old man late nights and watch, watch the fights. The old man was in the fight, and, you know, loved his boxing. And yeah, uh, we was, it was all stayed up together, me and him, and watched the Ali all the time. You know, he loved Ali. Well, he was the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, something that uh, nobody is at the moment. We can't seem to get him to fight, can we? To make it undisputed. I, I've got a funny thing that ain't, that ain't gonna happen this year, us. Think it's gonna happen? Yeah. Oh, the Fury one. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. But getting back to Leon Spinks, what did you think about his career other than the Ali? <laughs> Do you think it sort of petered out? Well, of course he did, did yeah. yeah. What do you think yeah. to his career as an amateur, Leon Spinks? Honestly, Russ, you know, when I was watching it, I think it was about, um, I don't know, 12, 13, maybe 14. Um, yeah, I did, I, I, listen, I didn't know much, too much about it back in there. I just just watch it, the old man, you know. But yeah, uh, I, don't, I didn't study his background and his, his, his younger days in boxing. But you listen, great fighter. To career, Leon Spinks, mate. All right. Didn't you rate him as an amateur? I, like I say, I didn't know too much about him. You yeah. know, uh, when I was a kid, I was just watching the fights. I, I did look into the background and what how many fights he had and all that. We just used to look at the fights, didn't we? At the end of the day, so. yeah. Well, he won a gold medal in 1976 at Montreal. So he, he, he did. A, yeah, and, and then he beat good. Ali in his ninth fight. He was seven and zero, oh, and I think he might have been seven and zero oh and a draw. He was either his eighth or ninth fight. He fought Ali, something like that. How old was he then? Oh, he'd, he'd, he'd have been two years after Olympics. That one. Yeah. So he, obviously he had a lot on him too 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 early. I think. Yeah. Your vigor and sharpness and age beat Ali, but Ali old manned him in rematch. Yeah, and I, I think it's a shame how it's ended up with him. And I thought it was a shame for his brother Michael getting cheated out of millions and millions of pounds at, from Butch Lewis, and he, he had it hard. But these people are not good at looking after the money. Either. They're not all like Carl Froch and Clinton Woods that can be smart mm. with the money. Not everybody's like that, are they? Yeah, you get a lot of hangers on, don't you, when you win the title? Oh, definitely. Mate. I mean, when Liam Cameron won Commonwealth, he were like Rod Stewart in Sheffield. You couldn't get in his house for two months. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, moving on. Uh, let's have a look. Luke Campbell and Ricky Burns has been muted for May. What do you think to that? Be a good fight. You think Ricky Burns might be a little bit past it now? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Do you think Luke Campbell would be a favourite in that, Mick? Yeah, definitely. 100%. I think he would. I think he would. I'd like to see Luke Campbell step up to 140. But uh, maybe he might have a world title in him if matched correctly. But he's been matched hard. All right, then. Uh, Mark Breland's come out and he's, he's dug Wilder out of a sack in him. I think Mark Breland saved him from a, from a lifelong career injury against Tyson Fury because they were getting smashed about. I can understand why Elder wanted to go out on his shield, but he's saved for another day and he's got the chance of a rematch if they can get it on with Fury. I don't know what's going to happen with that, but I thought it would be harsh to get rid of him because you win together, you lose together, don't you, as a team. What do you think to that, mate? 
Well, it's like what I was saying about Barry McGuinn earlier in the day, you know what I mean? Because this guy's lost, you know. Um, Wilder's lost and he thought, you know what, he's going to go somewhere else, somewhere better. Yeah. Yeah, because, he, he, you know, he's, he's, he's taking that weight. So, at the end of the day, you know, listen, I understand what you're saying, but when you're in the in the ring and you're boxing and, and that happens and you, your corner guy stops you, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit heartbreaking. But listen, we know what was happening to Wilder on that night. I think got clipped around the back of the head or the ear. He lost his balance and he weren't going nowhere. And the yeah. only other thing can relate to is further damage, which I believe he's done the right thing. But getting rid of him, listen, getting rid of him, a bit below the belt, but listen, that's the way, that's what boxing for you, isn't it? That's how the boxers look at things at the end of the day. Uh, they don't think about the good days they have every day because they, they look at one bad day and that's it. You're up next. Yeah, I, I suppose that's right. What did you think to uh, the Tony Bellio statement where he admitted that Sky uh, reprimanded him for being a cheerleader at the side of the ring and cheering loudly for his friend Derek Chisora while working as a Sky pundit ringside? Do you feel that that were in bad taste from Tony? Well, yeah, but he should stay professional, shouldn't he? I know what he's talking about. I know it's as always his power on that, but you can't be shouting ringside, especially yeah. in the conditions they were on that day, you know what I mean? Because you, you, like, you stood out like sort of underneath. Um, you've got to stay, sit back and act professional and let it go. Although I understand Tony's point of view. It's his friend up there. He wants to shout. So yeah. is it bad? I wouldn't say it's bad. Is it good? There's a room. Say, about it, he's working for the Sky. He's got to hush yeah. and be professional. Yeah. But he wanted to show his friend that he was there for him, which is a good point. The rumour doing the rounds at the moment, that, that, well, the whisper, should I say, is that Tony Bellew has got too comfortable at the Sky and he's just basically doing what he wants. I mean, one of the shows, it, he announced he were turning up two days later and they had to arrange for testing and an hotel room in bubble and this and that and basically doing what, we, what he wants. Do you think he's got too comfortable at Sky and uh, <coughs> he forgets well, what his duties are? Possibly, possibly. But listen... Keep being uncomfortable and you see what happens. Simple. Keep, Keep doing what you're doing, being uncomfortable, and let's see what happens. Yeah. It's only time before Sky fix anything about it. Well, you're a bit loud for this, we'll get you ready. Yeah? Or, you know, it's down to Sky at the end of the day, isn't it? It's what, how they see it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, then. Uh, what do you think about Billy Joe Saunders against Canelo if it happens in three months in May? Personally, no chance. You don't think it happens now? Listen, we'd like Billy to win because, look, he's a Brit, yeah, and support and get behind him. But to be honest, I don't think he's got a chance to beat Canelo. Um, listen, I'd like him to win, but I don't think he's got a chance of winning. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's an hard fight for Billy because he's not sure. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because Billy, once he come out of David Lamont, Lemieux, uh, he should have fought another three, four fights. Kept that up. You know what I mean? That pace he was at. You know, that's the best I've fought, seen Billy fight. He, he shocked me, really, how he fought that night. Yeah? Because I didn't see that in Billy. But listen, I thought, he's up that, about David Lemieux. And I thought, he ain't got a chance here. Honestly, I thought that. Because he, he, he's a bit of a scrapper, isn't he, Lemieux? So he done the right thing. Worked on his footwork. You know, in and out, in and out, and he frustrated the boot, and you can see the frustration in his face. Um, but he's been out of the ring too long, I believe. And uh, if he had another two, three, four fights after that, bang, he'd be on top of where he wants to be. But not fighting, them missing out on three, three fights, maybe, uh, to keep him up there, yeah, he's dropped down a bit. Yeah. Um, who knows? Listen. Anything can happen in boxing, but I don't believe he has it right now to, to be Canelo. If he stepped out of the ring with David Lemieux and his next fight was Canelo, i say, you know what? He's got a good chance. You know, you, you always go on about the David Lemieux fight, don't you, Mick? Listen, Bill fought amazing. And everyone would say that for him. Yeah, but... Yeah? Let's, let's, That's the best thing. Yeah, but what you forget, Mick, is David Lemieux weren't a world champion at the time. 
and this was in 2017. It's 2021 and a different weight division now, Mick. Yeah, there's that as well. Oh, so, that's a big, that's a big jump. I don't it? make Billy Joe, Joe Son as a favourite. I think all them people that are saying he's got, it can beat Canelo and all that. They're just cheerleading and they don't want to get on. Listen, at anyway. the end of the day, you got to be honest. Um, Otherwise, what's the point of talking about anything? What's the point of doing a podcast or getting on a show? You know what I mean? Um, you've got to be honest, and I believe Billy Joe will not beat Canelo. Mark uh, like say, Al and, and Billy Joe don't beat Canelo in a month of Sundays. He doesn't do it in... He, sorry, who says that? Mark Tibbs is my pal, and I'll say, Billy Joe doesn't beat Canelo at 168. He doesn't beat him. He doesn't... And Mark's say, saying that. Mark Tibbs is saying that. No, no, I'm saying Mark Tibbs is my pal, and it's his trainer, but I'm not just going to say, yeah, Mark, he can beat him. I don't think he can beat him. The best Billy Joe Saunders doesn't beat the worst Canelo. Because he's not going to get the decision on points, is he, out there? Mm -hmm. And he doesn't knock him out, because he doesn't... Who does he knock out? Who's he ever knocked out? Tell me who he's well, knocked out. Who's a good knockout? He oh. doesn't have a knockout punch, though, does he, Bill? Oh, is he going to knock Canelo out? No. Canelo's had punches off Golovkin and Kovalev, two of the biggest hitters of the last 25 years. They couldn't mm. budge him. So Billy's not going to budge him. So what's he going to do? He's going to go on back foot. Is he going to pinch rounds against him? It's not going to happen. Well, that's what's going to happen, isn't it? That's what he's he's selling his make. O if he fights him. He's selling his O. <sighs> Well, there's that as well, isn't it? And if you, you thought, know, if you think Billy Joe Saunders is a naughty boy and all them words that people call him on here, vile and vulgar and whatever, can you imagine what he's going to be like if he gets beat? Oh, my God, get yeah. ready. Get, get ready, social media. <laughs> I just think, he, I just think he, he maybe needs to wait it out a bit longer and see, but he's got a better chance at 160 than 168. Don't you think? Mm, definitely. That's what I think, but I don't know. People keep, you know, all them people who keep saying he can win. Look, I'd like to see him beat Canelo because can can keep the belt over here and have some big fights over here. But I just we saw we saw what he did to Callum Smith, and Billy didn't want Callum Smith fight, did he? And so mm. I just don't see. It. I don't think them Americans or Mexican or wherever he is. I think the they're better than us technically. They're a lot better. I saw I saw Andre Dirrell come over, and he was technically better than Carl Froch. Carl had to rough him up and make him mm. rough. And there's so much that's happening in America with these fighters, and they're just so much better than our fighters. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. Plus, Canelo's active all the time, isn't he? You know. Yeah, yeah. He's like Billy. How many fights has Billy had in the last six years? Six or seven? What's he had? One, can, one a year. But Canelo's actively. Like I say, fighting all the time, and he's actually training all the time. You know, he has to. Mm. Um, so that's the difference. Yeah, yeah, that's a good. That's another good point. Uh, all right, then, Mick. Have you what? what do you want to finish up on anything? Have you got anything you'd like to put out? Have you got a message for Big John Fury? I'm the best. Turn up. Just turn yeah. up. Hell, you mate, Porky. He's a blowjob around me, brother Peter and Dave Thompson. He's a blowjob. Well, you've not yeah. turned up, have you, John? You've had plenty of time to fight Mick or get it on. You haven't turned up. You even down near where Mick lived, weren't you, a few months ago, John? Why don't you call in for your car wash? To Mick's car wash. All you got to do is call in. Get at it. No good talking. Well, have you got a message for Big John Fury? The fighting yeah. man that don't fight. What's your message, mate? Let's get together for the NHS, the ill mentally, and the disabled children, and let's do something good for them. Yeah. And turn up. If you yeah, can. for charity, isn't it? Because John likes a bit of charity. He doesn't need a charitable. That's all it is. Listen, it's a challenge for charity. You know what? And you know what? I could just keep going on about it. I'm not going to drive myself mad. Um, we just keep chipping away and hoping, uh, you know, John will come out and fight me for a good cause. And uh, like I say, it's for charity. It'd be uh, a bit better than these clowns that are getting on social media with these masks on, wouldn't it? I mean, that's comedy hour, isn't it? Well, you know, they just, they, they've got nothing else better to do, these people. Uh, Holy like mate, you don't say, don't... hide behind masks, hide behind walls. You know, it's just the way they are, isn't it? You yeah. know? 
I mean, he, he, they thought, I only, I only watched that uh, today, funny enough, that video, and he's coming out with some fucking garbage, isn't he? Eh? Filthy mouth on him. Mick, you know what it is? If they can't budget on social media, they have to make stuff up to get a reaction from you. And if you react... Yeah, but I'm not Mr. Reaction. I'm not. No, I'm not. I'll go block... Cameron, delete. block all <laughs> trolls and remove all vile comments. Yes, I tell them to bl block all you trolls. Why do people who are decent boxing fans need to come on? And he's got the up with you as well, isn't he? Eh? He's got the up as well with you, isn't he? The mask, man. Oh, you were up my arse of a week. <laughs> it's because we're not giving him no attention. You with mask on, get to Sheffield and email me. And somebody will come and pick you up and fetch you to Chris Medley's gym. And I'll punch you upside down, you prick. <laughs> Stop chatting nonsense. Come see me. Not hard to find. Jesus. Retford Road, King's Gym. Bo King's Boxing, Retford Road, Woodhouse, Sheffield, S13. Turn up. <laughs> so, all right then, Mick. Well, listen, I'm going to get off because I'm out tonight. I've got some on. And I'm all right, mate. I've only just got in from work. But, all right, my friend, listen, you take care. And, you uh, too. We'll be safe. Later. All right, my friend. Take care. God bless. Peace out. Well, that were my good pal, Mickey Theo. Uh, I enjoyed that. Uh, good boxing bloke, Mick. You like give him a lot of stick because he don't get every question right that we talk about, but not everybody's perfect, are they, who watches boxing? Some people like the sport and they don't study it as much as others. So get behind him because he will get the John Fury fight eventually because can you imagine John Fury when the boxing season opens and the fans are at these shows and he's there walking around with his entourage, it's bad to get somebody say, John, when are you going to fight Mickey Vio? He's got to fight. Don't hide, John. Don't hide. Peace out.